Oh, baby! Hey guys, what is up and I welcome each and every one of you to the preview of Nico, the curious chameleon. Throughout this video, I'll be going over each of Nico's abilities, showing you gameplays and everything else you need to know to give you a better idea as to what this champion even does and you're in for quite a surprise. Nico is an immobile mage that can disguise herself to trick enemies and then burst them down. So speaking of disguising herself, let's start off with her passive first, which is called Inherent Glamour. Nico can disguise herself to appear as an allied champion, damaging or taking damage from enemy champions or casting either blooming Burst or Tangle Barbs, which is the Q and E, breaks the illusion and increases the cooldown. This ability is what kind of defines Nico for what the champion really is, a chameleon. You're going to be using this in combination with a lot of your other abilities to truly confuse the enemy and make them second guess everything that they see. Moving on to her Q ability, Blooming Burst. Nico propels a seed into a target area, which blooms and damages enemies. If the burst kills an enemy or damages a champion or a large monster, it will bloom again up to two times, dealing reduced damage. This is Nico's bread and butter ability. You'll be using this for the majority of your tasks, whether it's harassing opponents, harassing in the lane, or using it for wave clear. This is also the ability you're going to want to max first in almost all scenarios. Moving on to Nico's W ability, it is called Shape Splitter, and it has two parts to it. The passive being, every third basic attack resonates with spiritual energy, dealing bonus magic damage and briefly increasing Nico's movement speed. And the active portion of her W is, Nico briefly slips out of sight, becoming invisible, gaining movement speed, and sending a temporary clone of her current form sprinting in a chosen direction. Her W passive opens her up to attack speed build, so something like Nasher's Tooth, and this will make things very interesting and actually quite strong in her as well. But her W active is where things get much more interesting, because this is where you can use to really confuse your opponents combined with your passive and later you'll see also combined with your ultimate. You will usually want to max this ability last because it is essentially a one point wonder, but again don't forget you can also choose the direction that the clone runs in to truly confuse your opponents. Moving on to Nico's E ability, Tangled Barbs. Nico slings a magical spiral in a direction, damaging and briefly rooting enemies it passes through. The last champion hit is rooted longer. If Tangle Barbs hits at least two enemies, it grows in size, speed, and root duration. So let me tell you this, if you thought Morgana Binding lasted for a while, or you thought Lux Q was annoying to deal with, then you haven't seen anything yet. This ability you will want to max second because it is very powerful, because not only can it also be used for wave clear, but don't forget, it goes through minions and it goes through champions. So you can actually use this to go through minions in the laning phase to hit the champion hiding behind the minions, thinking they're safe to catch them off guard. And on top of this, if it does go through at least, let's say, two minions, it goes faster and it becomes harder to dodge, which makes it very, very powerful. And did I mention that the root duration can go up to three seconds? And last but not least, we have her ultimate, Pop Blossom. Nico begins charging herself with Spiritual Essence. A moment later, she leaps into the air, gains a shield, and slows nearby enemies, releasing energy upon landing to massively damage and stun enemies in a large area. When disguised by Inherent Glamour, which is her passive, enemies won't actually see Nico's initial charge up to her ultimates, thus giving them a lot less time to dodge the detonation. So the base damage on her ultimate isn't anything insane, however, the scaling is. It scales exceptionally well, so as you start getting more and more AP, this ultimate is going to seriously hurt. And since Nico is fairly immobile, this is going to obviously force her to be in the middle of a teamfight or at least fairly deep into the lines, which is why you get a shield based on how many enemy champions there are around you as you initially detonate it. So a quick rough example is you can disguise yourself as an allied Olaf that's low on HP and you can pretend like you're about to int it down, run it right at them and then instantly pop your ultimate. They won't see the initial charge up but by the time they realize you're not actually Olaf, you're actually Nico, it's a little bit too late because you can also follow up with your E ability first and then you can actually let the ultimate explode forcing them to take the damage. Or if you really need to, you can also use your W for that extra movement speed on top of also your W's passive to try and catch up to your opponents. All in all though, this gives Nico a very interesting dynamic 
dynamic because even though she is an immobile mage that usually wants to kind of sit in the back and just be very confusing, you have to watch out because if a certain team fight gives her the opportunity, she will actually go right in the middle of it with her ultimate and instantly turn the tides in her favor. And this ultimate's damage, especially as the game progresses, is not something you want to take lightly. Now let's take a look at some examples from in-game. Alright, so in this example, you can see how I play the laning phase. So I have all three abilities I just hit level three, and this one I want to try to fake her out with my W. Unfortunately, it actually does not work, but it does show some aggressiveness. Now, the second that Lissandra walks a little bit too close, I'm always looking for the minions to combine with my E so that it ensures the long snare on the Lissandra. And there you can see I landed it. The second it lands, I instantly throw my Q. It almost guarantees that she'll get procced by all three Qs with ignites and also the auto for my W passive nails me the first blood kill. So in this next example, you're going to be seeing a massive team fight where we try to just get as big of a wombo as we can because her ultimate is just so good at it. So the enemy team decides to start up the dragon, and luckily for us, we have a massive combo. So the Zat goes in, ults them all back. I pop my ultimate, the AoE smashes everyone down. We get massive kills, and they die in just a matter of seconds, which is a great demonstration as to how she can be used in team fights and just the potential that her ultimate can offer. So this next example is going to be showing how well you can use her passive to also bait enemy champions. So in this case, I disguise myself as the Zack, who's actually quite low on HP, and I run into the enemy Zen. He thinks he's, I'm an actual Zack, so he tries to fight me, but little does he know, I'm actually a full HP Nico. Instantly burst him down, and it's just that simple. Alright, so this next clip is a perfect demonstration of just deception. So I'm hiding in the bush, pretending like I'm a Zack about to gank. They don't know I'm even in this bush, but we have the real Zack above them as well. So I initiate the gank with my W. They actually think that's the real Zack initially, because the clone runs out while I'm invisible. Little did they know, I'm actually a Nico. Pop my ultimate, do my full damage, and then the real Zack also re-engages from the behind as well. And we can go ahead and clean them up quite easily. So in this next clip, you're going to be seeing kind of a trolley looking gank where I disguise myself as a Zack. And we actually make three clones of a Zack, or I guess three Zacks total. So as I'm in this bush with a Zack himself, he goes out at the same time as I go out. I also throw out my W, so now we have three Zacks total on top of this Lissandra. And even with that, I mean, we just instantly pick up the kill on her because there's really not a whole lot she can do anymore. And it just kind of shows you what you can really do with this champion and the depth and potential with this champion as well. Okay, so this next example has to be my favorite one by far. So in this one, I want to pretend like I'm actually the Grave. So I can see that my bot lane is actually losing. The Graves is a little bit low on HP. The Lucian is obviously being quite aggressive. So as the Graves walks out of vision, I actually take the form of Graves. Don't forget, I have his HP bar to the enemy team. So they think I'm low HP. They think I'm the real Graves. So I'm purposely playing a little bit scared. They think I'm, you know, kind of inting it, running it down. They hard engage on me, but little do they know I'm a full HP Nico once again. And I just unleash my load on them and they die. So in this example, it's going to be showing you what great teamwork can do and just 200 IQ plays as well. So I take the form of my Zac, which is, of course, my team's jungler, and we go for the dragon, while the real Zac with our AD carry, which is Graves, are actually doing Baron. Now, while we're doing the dragon, the enemy team, actually, you're going to see here, walks up to the pit, and they scout us, and they see we're doing it. But you want to make sure you don't take any damage from dragon, or else you will go back to your original form. Now, because of this, the enemy team is obviously very sure that we are actually doing dragon, which we are, but they also think that I'm the jungler. But little do they know this whole time, even though we still get the dragon, our two allies, and one of them being the real jungler, are doing Baron this whole time. And we, on top of get the dragon, we also get the Baron as well for our team. And I mean, these kind of plays are hard to do. Only works, of course, if you're fed. But if you are fed, then you can do some pretty cool stuff. So for the next part of the video, I'll show you guys some live footage of me playing back when I was at Riot, showing you some just gameplay that we had overall, which is going to be hopefully quite interesting to see. I love how our egos are minions, it's so nice. Oh, it's warrior here, they don't hear. Oh my god, oh my god. I was hoping I didn't need to flash. My chance. Alright. Alright. All right. Oh yeah, baby, let's go. Oh yes, I like it. <laughs> Finally, dude. Oh, he saw me transform. Awkward. I'm 
Coming in hot, baby! Hey! <laughs> uh, it's definitely you, obviously. Oh, baby. Oh, that's a lot of people. Alright. Alright, maybe that was a little ambitious, my bad, man. Oh, he's dead, he's dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So much damage. Oh my god, they all blocked me, I couldn't get in! Oh, they didn't. I'm in thing too, got the Jin though. Oh my god. Yeah, I got voice up, I got voice up, I got voice up. Wait, let that go away. Alright, still moving though. Wait, I took so much damage. Oh shit, come here baby! Ah! Get out of here. I'm dead though. Like, she ignited me, what can I say? I'll play. Yeah. Oh! This gear spam. last part of this video is going to be with some music, showing off all her emotes, showing her backing animation, showing her skin as well, and just some general gameplay just destroying minions and showing off her abilities together once again.
that's gonna be it for the preview of Nico the Curious Chameleon. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this champion and what you think of her abilities and how overall overpowered she thinks she'll be, how her playstyle is, and whatever other comments you have. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, definitely make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't. Check out my other videos as well, and I'll see you guys for the full gameplay of Nico.